Greetings, this is live prostodontics on Friday, which addresses different steps in prostodontic treatment as well as the side effects. Today, we have Professor Kim Hee-jung of Prostodontics Division at Joseon University, and he's going to discuss about maintenance of overdenture greetings. I'm sure you're busy with educating the students and treating patients. So thank you for coming all the way from Gwangju to join us in Prostodontics on Friday. Can you please briefly explain about your lecture today? I'm going to talk about relining and maintenance of overdenture using implants. There are not that many lectures on overdenture. Thank you for preparing the lecture. And to providing such lecture in prosthodontics on Friday, I look forward to your lecture. Thank you. Those of you watching the program from then on site, you can communicate real time via chat. Please leave your questions and we'll address them. With a lucky draw, you'll be able to win Starbucks coffee coupons. Best question will be chosen and three Starbucks coffee coupons will be sent. It's a steamy summer. Study hard and earn your ice cold coffee coupons. Only those of you who agree to marketing in Donald site will be able to receive the coupons. Please take note of this. I look forward to your keen interest and let us begin Professor Kim Mi Jung's lecture. Greetings, I'm Professor Kim Mi Jung of the Prosthodontics Division at Joseon University Dental School. Today I'm going to talk about relining and maintenance of implant overdenture. Today I'm going to talk about these four contents in brief. Relining over denture, it sounds easy, but for many dentists, it feels foreign and awkward. If you come across this kind of patient, the patient received a lower denture two, three months ago. The denture was loose and whenever the patient ate, the patient felt pain in the gingival area. That was the chief complaint. If you have a lot of experience, you know exactly what to do, but for beginners, this is not easy. Sometimes the cause may be vague and you may be confounded as to how to alleviate the symptom because it is your first time treating that. Many ha people have difficulties. In this case, don't feel too prostrated and always check the occlusion first. In removable prosthesis patients, the discomfort arises mostly 70-80% from the occlusion. Because the patient has been wearing the denture for two to three months, it w I thought it was more of a occlusion problem rather than fit problem. Therefore, I did I took a CR and did clinical remounting. You cannot really see it on the labial side, but on the lingual side, in the lower right, there's only contact in the cusp. Occlusal adjustment was done. And with this, the discomfort decreased to over 70%. In most cases, rather than doing clinical remounting, they use articulating paper to check occlusion. However, you cannot really get a detailed occlusal error because as shown in the image, when the patient closes mouth, the A process leads to B process. During the A process, so where there is early contact, the tissue sinks and then the B process begins. You need to get premature contact on the A process, but if you look at articulating paper, the B process shown and you cannot really see where the problem is. 
When you adjust occlusion for full denture, you need to use clinical remounting using articulator. In the case of this patient, occlusal adjustment was done two times and the discomfort was completely gone. The patient was very satisfied. Interestingly, there was no sore spot or laceration observed while the patient was still in pain. In order to fine-tune occlusion, you need to mount it on the articulator to correct the error. If you look at the situations where occlusion is the cause, it's where the patient has only been using the denture for one month or when the patient continues to feel discomfort, although rebasing was done in a separate dental clinic. In this case, it's not a problem with a fit, but 100% it is a occlusal problem. If the patient feels unilateral pain or when the patient first adapts the denture in the morning, it feels good, but in later words, it may become more loose and cause pain. In this case, occlusion can be the problem. Next, Tissue conditioner and fit checker is recommended to use when doing denture relining. When you use tissue conditioner, in general, it is used for mucosal adjustment and tissue adjustment. This is a functional impression material for lab relining. It is a great material for determining prognosis of denture relining. As shown in the image, denture is not used for patients with changes in interarch movements. Before denture was insured, you used to see these patients very frequently and the patient required relining. This occurred quite frequently. These days, it is insured every 7-8 years or so. We don't need to face these kind of patients. It's the same with this patient. You can see that this is a very old denture. The patient came in for repair. It's quite doubtful as to whether the patient will be able to use it after repair. The upper and lower are all partial dentures. The upper prosthesis fractured as the patient dropped it in the bath. I wanted to know the prognosis of it. If you reline this, I don't know how much safe it is going to be and how well it will be maintained or how the occlusion will be recovered. Fit checker was used and relining was done for both upper and lower. The rest of the partial denture got fixed on the rest of the seat, so it was not difficult to position it. If you look at the inner surface of the relined denture, you can see that there's a lot of empty space when you use tissue conditioner. So this amount is quite extensive. However, when I had the patient bite with occlusal adjustment, I was convinced that occlusion could be recovered. Occlusal adjustment was done, tissue conditioner was used, relining as well as occlusal adjustment was done. In the oral cavity, the lower denture was positioned with the co tissue conditioner applied. Relining of the upper was done first. Relining was done using the light polymerization type. After the upper was positioned, relining was done on the lower. This is before and after relining. In vague cases, you can use a tissue conditioner first, apply it, and determine prognosis. This is very useful. In general, in the case of upper, when you reline full denture, the error that occurs very frequently, the relining material gets stuck or it becomes too thick and leading to occlusal changes. As shown in this image, the denture can move anteroposteriorly, leading to unbalanced occlusion. Therefore, rather than applying relining material first, you should use tissue conditioner first and determine how much relining is going to be done. You need to determine the prognosis first, and this is very important. You can also use impression taking material. If the patient has difficulty adapting to the newly formed denture, if the tissue compatibility or masticatory force, if it requires a little bit of adaptation, you can prep the rest except for the tissue stop. 
and use it like an impression material. You can take functional impression, send it to the lab and do liberal lining. Flasking is done to complete it. You can do an in indirect manner when you apply resin or do denture flasking. If there's a lot of relining, it can cause volume changes, but it's a great relining method that is used up to this day. Can I ask you a question? When in the textbook, in order to supplement the denture base, so we sometimes talk about rebasing and relining. At times, we need to refabricate the denture itself. Clinically speaking, is there a standard where we can use to determine in which cases we do relining and rebasing? Thank you for the question. The criteria for relining and rebasing is quite vague. These days, it is ensured because patients can receive insurance benefit every seven years, there are rarely any cases where it requires rebasing. At times, it may be required because if the patient has suffered from systemic disease or has been hospitalized the long term due to cancer or other diseases, and if there's a lot of alveolar bone resorption, then we can try it. But in most cases, relining is better. We need to make a new denture if problem cannot be solved with relining or rebasing. I've shown you briefly in the image earlier, but if there is severe interarch changes so much so that it becomes class 3 or if there's mandibular protrusion or a severe alveolar bone resorption leading to decreased vertical height, relining or rebasing alone may not be enough to solve the problem. In this case, refabrication may be necessary. If there is a significant resorption leading to a gap and if the patient becomes class 3, in this case, we need to make a new denture. Yes, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Taking this opportunity, let's look at the chat screen to look at some of the questions that we have received thus far. ID World Class. Today's prosthodontics on Friday day. I look forward to today's program. Dahlia, thank you for the wonderful topic. I look forward to your lecture. Joe. And return to Dr. Lee. I look forward to your lecture. There are many nice comments. There is a question raised by ID Gung. Do you use overdenture in the upper as well? Is there any precautions that I should take? It's a question about overdenture. This will be addressed during the lecture, but to tell you briefly in the case of upper, we all know that solitary type is worse compared with splinted type. Therefore, when you use overdenture in the upper, rather than using solitary type, you need to do a splinted type. IDRNRN, when you do clinical mounting and take a causal relation. How do you guide the lower? What is the best way in the oral cavity? When guiding CR, I use Aloax. Textbook mentions of using finger. Use your second finger and thumb between the molar and retract it. You need to make sure that same Masticatory force is applied on both sides and use aloe wax. This is a very credible method that I use currently. ID Hahat. Do you prefer full metal palatal plate when you fabricate upper denture or do you prefer mesh type? In PPS area, do you custom fabricate it using resin? I am conflicted because of future relining issues. This is really dependent on patient's preference. 
Even if you do full metal palatal plate full coverage, the amount of red lining does not become extremely thick. Some people only make a posterior palatal seal area in resin. Because of the metal thickness in that area, at times it can become thicker. Denture's longevity it extends beyond 10 years and 20 years. I recommend doing full coverage. I understand full coverage. ID awesome. When you do relining on metal full denture in the metal area in due time, there's food impaction. How can I reduce this problem? In my case, this is incomplete in some ways. In my case, on the metal area, I do a little bit of sandblasting and use primer, metal primer. And after that, it, when I reline resin, I cover the BP, the posterior area, then it does not go up to the tissue level. In that case, is there a gap between the metal and the relined resin? If you use metal primer, it will not be a problem. More so than that, if there is trauma on that area, when there is epidemiological problem, then a damage to the resin on the inner surface becomes more prominent. ID Idna, which do you prefer, direct or indirect method for a relining? It's a complicated issue. This also is determined by patient preference. If the patient cannot live without denture for a day or two, inevitably I use direct method within oral cavity. Direct method is not all bad. It has many advantages. Although there is discoloration and weak strength, after relining, the discomfort felt by the patient is significantly reduced compared to when it is sent to the lab and it goes through flasking. There can be error associated with the lab and adjustment related issues. You need to do adjustment on the inner surface as well as occlusion. This may need to be done all over again. As for direct method, it may require less work. Yes, it has some benefits. Holiday. I've really looked forward to prosthodontics on Friday. Nice to meet you, Professor Kim Hee Jung. Professor Cho you know, you look awesome as always. IDKY Perio, a question related to overdenture. You're going to explain about overdenture. So from now, the questions will be addressed in the next Q&A session. Thank you for the wonderful answers. Please carry on with your lecture. Now I'm going to carry on. The second, it is simple as the best. Let's look at ways to treat a dentulous patient. So you can use a full denture, over denture. You can also use multiple implants to provide fixed prosthesis. In different literatures, as well as clinical experience long term, we understand that fixed prosthesis is much better than over denture. And overdenture is much functionally better than full denture. Longevity and prognosis of implant supported fixed prosthesis is much better than that of implant supported overdenture. Why do we still use uh, overdenture? It may be because of patient's economic reason or anatomical limitation. Or the patient may not be able to use a full denture. In other words, the patient may have severe alveolar bone resorption or if the patient is using unilateral denture. The patient expectation is to receive a more upgraded full denture. Regardless of overdenture fixed prosthesis or full denture, I believe prosthesis it needs to be designed easily and it needs to be used 
with ease. It also needs to be maintained simply, both by the dentist and the patient. That's very important. Today's theme is overdenture. The best form of overdenture has been suggested by Browning Mark when implant was first introduced. This was placed in 1997. I checked the patient last in 2019. The patient was using hybrid type denture with no problems up until then. Since then, dentists, in order to maximize efficiency, they placed the minimum implants and hope for maximum effect. The different types of overdenture were tried. O-ring, locator, solitary type were used. Bark were used as well, milk bar or telescope type overdenture. These days, people use T-bar to provide one unit zirconia prosthesis. Compared with solitary type, if you place four to six implants and connect it, the bar type implant prosthesis shows better prognosis. It's a statistically proven. And in the case of lower, the implant prognosis is better compared with the upper. It's much better. The maintenance component or Replacement of abutment may be necessary, but compared with the upper, the prognosis was much better when solitary type and bar type were used. Room for improvement in the lower, as mentioned, the components related to risk or abutments, they need to be replaced quite frequently. This is destined to happen in overdenture patients. There can be many problems in overdenture patients in terms of maintenance. Fracture of denture base due to wear or lack of space. The thickness of the lingual denture base can be too thick or there can be gingival proliferation due to bar implant failure due to early contact. These problems erupt for overdenture patients if they use it for long term. Does overdenture give only bad experiences for dentists and patients alike? In the case of this patient in 2008, the lower was fairly okay, but the upper it was severely atrophied. Conventional denture could not be used for this patient. Implant was placed in a very difficult manner in 2002. The prosthesis in the upper was removed two months ago. As for the lower, originally we wanted to keep two, but I decided to start from scratch and removed everything a week ago. As you can see, the bar looks very solid and I had a hard time every time I replaced it. The patient was very happy with the denture and when the patient came back, he told me that he wanted something like what he's received before. This is a second case. This is a case in 2014. The upper was severely atrophied. I didn't want to respond to it because it was very difficult to maintain and for the patient this was a difficult case as well. I wanted to try to make this case easier because the ridge was too resorbed in the upper. Maintenance and stability was most integral for stability. I designed the bar. I needed to maintain it, so casting was done to install magnet. It was quite effective for maintenance as well as stability. In the case of lower, two magnets were used to gain sufficient retention. This was the design. Total of three relining was done because I did once recently. This is after one year, three years, and six years. After three years, I just replaced one magnet, and after five years, I replaced all magnets except for the one recently replaced. The relining was done. Compared with the bar, maintenance was extremely easy, and the patient was able to use it very easily. Retention loss was comparatively less. 
It was not easy to make and design a bot for the patient, and in terms of maintenance, it was a very good case. The patient continues to use it. We don't need to make a bar in a difficult way. If the patient can adjust to denture well, if you can place two implants in the lower, this can be a good alternative. You don't need to make things complicated. This is a case in 2009. The patient wanted implant prosthesis in the lower and over denture for the upper. I think the patient had fantasy of overdenture. The patient thought that it's going to be fixated. The problem or the condition was that the patient didn't want the palatal area covered. The patient wanted the slotted type overdenture. It was extremely dis difficult to design and it was also difficult for the patient because for the dentist, this falls off very easily, but it's very difficult for the patient to remove it with the patient's finger. Second, in the beginning, because of friction, it was fixated really well, but after a couple of times, it was rickety and loose, so the patient wasn't happy. The patient could not adjust to it. In the end, the patient gave up on this, and we added more implants to get fixed prosthesis. Ten years have passed since. Apart from occlusal adjustment, no further work was needed. You can see that the patients prefer fixed prosthesis much more. This is quite obvious. This was the same for this case. In the upper and lower, six implants were placed each. I wanted to make overdenture, but if you make overdenture, the patients can't adjust it to it. Therefore, I provided a fixed prosthesis because the span was short. Fortunately, this case was completed in 2008. Even though it took 14 years, there is very little problem, such as implant loss. There is no problem. Rather than overdenture with movement, providing fixed prosthesis. These days, all the next and such designs are available, and I think that is more ideal. Recently, Magic 4 is becoming more widespread. 4 T bar is used, a very rigid zirconia prosthesis goes in. You need to observe this longer, but except for the area where screw is tightened, the rest is cemented. If the cemented area can be maintained, I think this could be a good concept as well. Three years have passed since delivery. Up until now, it's being maintained nicely. As of late, removable prosthesis is said to be insured according to an article. Shortly after, I participated in a panel discussion and one panelist was a private practitioner. This is his case. If the prognosis of residual teeth are not good, if you use two using insurance using that tooth and if you use the other two for making partial denture, rather than making over denture, the presenter said that partial denture was better. That made me think a lot. At times, it can be difficult to make, but from patient's perspective, I believe patients would prefer partial denture. In terms of dentist, as for maintenance, it is very difficult to grind a clip or other maintenance components. And in that case, partial denture could become a good alternative. Next, maintenance is necessary, and I wanted to emphasize this. Making over denture is very important. Maintaining that overdenture is even more important. You need to pay more attention to overdenture more so than full denture. You need to do regular checkup to check safety retention. In this case, four O-rings were placed. 
Overdenture was done in the lower. Overdenture was done. This was done in 2005. The patient continues to use it. In number 44, there was premature contact with the antagonist, so bone loss occurred. Locator was attached. The progression of bone loss has stopped and the patient continues to use this prosthesis to this day. Implant distribution was measured and stability and retention was very good. In order to evaluate this, we need to remember the fulcrum line and the rotation movement that accompanies it. If you have delivered the denture recently and if stability is good, fulcrum line is barely detectable, but with a significant rich resorption, fulcrum line is formed, O-ring, housing, and abutment becomes in contact, almost like premature contact, so the denture is not fixated here. This causes serious problems and significantly decreases stability of denture. In the case of full denture, the mechanism for retention is different. It's completely dependent on sealing. Retention can be very good with just sealing if the ridge is in good condition. This is called suction denture. Even if it is not suction denture, if you take a good impression, you can get that kind of sealing. In the case of upper denture, it does not gain retention with sealing. Retention is gained from attachment. Fulcrum line that is formed due to attachment. This is deeply related to the retention and stability of denture. We need to detect it early in order for long-term prognosis. In the case of this patient, as mentioned earlier, the patient came in at year three. What surprised me was that in the case of full denture, in the upper, you would not normally expect a palatal resorption, but in this case, there was significant resorption in the palate. I did relining on the palatal area as well. Except for the area that is in contact with the attachment, gingival changes occur extensively. We need to check if there is any movement. This is crucial. Occlusal evaluation of denture is very important. How much of occlusion should we make? In CR, it should be stable as shown. It needs to be stable as shown when the patient grinds sideways. After five years, the patient has been using the overdenture for five years. It shifts when the patient grinds, but now after adjustment, it doesn't shift. A closal adjustment needs to be done up to this level. The occlusion that deviates denture, it applies a negative impact on the alveolar bone as well as the attachment. So even if the patient uses overdenture, you need to provide balanced occlusion. Components of attachment need to be replaced regularly, O-ring, bar, or locator, magnet. In my case, Unless horizontal stability is crucial, I tend to use magnet. If you've tried it, you may know it, but the locator is quite rigid. Compared to locator, O-ring has less retention loss, and compared to O-ring, magnet has much less retention loss. The case that we've seen earlier, I just to replace the magnet once throughout five or six years. The image that you see, the patient has been using it for 16 years. I just replaced the magnet twice during the duration. You can see the damage here. You can see that there's a lot of wear on the assembly. A closal adjustment and relining of the inner surface is really important.
Finally, you need to understand the traits of overdenture that you use. The problem associated with fulcrum line, apart from attachment to wear, it leads to denture fracture. It causes a lot of wear in the components of attachment, and if a lot of force is concentrated in the thin area, it causes fracture. If you look at this patient, the patient has been using denture, implants were placed, and denture was connected in an immediate loading way. The patient experienced no problem while using denture, but after having placed the implant and connecting the attachment, you can see the sore spot before below the mentalis muscle. Because there's retention due to attachment, the denture is not shifted. This strain causes mentalis muscle to shrink, and whereas in the past, if it goes to the limit, the denture would dislocate, but now it doesn't. It withstands along the fulcrum line, leading to such pain. Therefore, when you do prosthesis delivery, you need to adjust reflecting these factors. You need to reattach attachments after relining. I'm sure some of you know, but in general, in the area where attachment was, you would put in other substances like cray or caveton. Which is used frequently for endodontic treatment and then proceed with the process. If the denture base is healthy, it doesn't matter, but if it is resorbed as shown in the bottom, if you do relining, then it will pressure the implant or there will be contact with the housing. If the denture is thin, this area is going to fracture. In the case of RPD, in the case of RPD, there's indirect retention mechanism or a third reference point like rest. You stabilize the rest and indirect mechanism, then the denture would reposition in its original status. In the case of stud type attachment, it is very difficult to reposition the denture. Theoretically, it is impossible. This is cumbersome, but in this case, you need to remove the attachment, do relining, and after that, you need to reconnect the attachment. That is recommended. Various types of overdentures exist. It's very difficult to determine how to attach attachments for different overdenture. In the case there is four locators, you may doubt whether you can connect all four. In the case of magnet, there is mounting ring, but if possible, in the case of solitary type, rather than doing multiple at the same time, you can do two at a time. It'll be better to reposition it. In the case of lower, if possible, bar types, they're more complicated. Excuse me. Bar type. The bar in the front, it's okay, but the one on the d back fracture can occur easily. And when you do relining in the oral cavity, you need to pay more attention so that force is not applied. You need to use the bar in the front as a third reference point to do relining. That'll be recommended. This is the end of my lecture. Thank you for listening. Professor Kim, thank you for the wonderful lecture. Maintenance of overdenture for long-term use. It was a wonderful lecture. Thank you.
we were entertaining some questions but we delayed it let's go back to the chat screen to proceed with q a session ky perio how frequent do you do follow-up after delivering over denture if relining is necessary how frequent do you do relining i'm curious about your protocol for over denture patients i have the patient come back a week later after delivery if there's no major problem i wait for about two months and check one last time after that i check every six months in the case of magnet and O ring. In the case of locator, I check every three months. That is recommended. The reason why you check every three months for locator, this is because changes occur much more for locator. If relining is necessary, after that, I take a similar protocol. If you do relining, I assume that you need to do a lot of work in terms of internal surface as well as the occlusion. ID Yong Yong. For over denture patients in the upper, how many implants do you place routinely? It's a good question. I've mentioned that simple is the best. These days, the trend is to place a six implants in the upper and six in the lower. We provide fixed prosthesis. So when I do over denture, I place less than four in the upper and in the lower, I use about four. If you place more than that, I think it'll be better to provide a fixed prosthesis. Have you had experience placing two implants in the upper? Yes. The patient has been using it for six, seven years, but there's no major problem. What kind of attachment did you use? The precondition is that the ridge was good. The patient was having difficulty because the ceiling broke off when the patient spoke. Because the patient had good ridge, magnet was used. I've mentioned this, but in the case of O-ring or locator, Fulcrum line is formed, especially in the premolar area, the loss of retention occurs much more quickly. In that case, if you just place two implants, the prognosis would not be very good. You need to use the magnet, yes. ID Jun Song 3820. What kind of overdenture is good if it, the patient is edentulous only on one side? By one side. I'm assuming that it's edentulous in the lower or the upper, yes. Depending on the depending on whether it's upper or lower, it may differ in the case of upper. In this case, no matter what you do, the prognosis is not really good. However, in the case of upper, if you use a splinted bar type or place about the six implants and connect to fixed prosthesis. That would be better in the case of lower. If the upper is natural dentition and if the lower is fully dentulous, it depends on the ridge. But if the ridge is good, solitary type can be used. If the ridge condition is really bad, we need to consider horizontal stability. Therefore, we can use a bar or telescope or other types of alternative. Good. I'm honored to listen to your lecture on overdenture. I feel the same way. ID Yeonji Shi, Professor. The patient is 52 year old male patient with 23 and 24 as residual teeth. The lower is class 4 RPD and with severe alveolar bone resorption. Which do you think is better? Should I do magnetic or locator IS RPD in number 13 and 14? Or should I do implant surveyed crown plus RPD on number 13 and 14? Which is better in terms of prognosis and maintenance? Are you going to do implant treatment or overdenture? Yes. 
If the lower is class 4, the posterior area, there is a little bit of residual teeth and it's functional. In this case, the problem with the upper is when the lower is Kennedy class 1 or if the lower shows interior guidance. In this case, number 23, number 24, you can leave the residual teeth. You can use full denture or magnet. I don't think using locator is appropriate. I don't think you need to use over denture. In the case of lower, RPD would be recommended. Number 13, 14, I don't think using locator or O-ring is ideal in terms of maintenance. That's a bad idea. Use implant. Use full denture for the upper and use a partial RPD for lower. Because number 23 and 24, Yes, over denture with a residual natural teeth. Or on the other side, you can place number 13 and 14. That is recommended. Greeny 8-7. There are patients who complain of food impaction within the metal frame. I think you have addressed this question. You need to do it again in this case. Even though it may be cumbersome, you need to do sandblasting and apply metal primer and do relining once again. You need to remake it or do relining. Everland 1-1, when you use magnet for full denture, how many magnets do you use for which area? In the case of lower, I don't really use a lot. You can use four, six, or maybe two. As for lower, unless the patient requires a lot of retention, in general, I just use two. Away from the posterior area, around the canine area. As for the upper, if possible, four, six, four, six would be ideal. Or 3535 would be okay. If the ridge is good, placing two in number three would be okay as well. When you use magnet, yes. When I was at school, when I did a test, when I did perio test, the bone quality was best in the canine area. The upper molar has three roots. If you look at canine, the perio test result is much better. In other words, the bone quality is better. You need to use the area where the canine is. Rainy day, as shown in the upper over denture, at times the milk bar is separated on left and right, and other times it is splinted. What is the difference in indication? Separate fabrication. It's like a clock by split. What is the difference in terms of indication? I have not that many experiences, so it's difficult to separate the indication. There's no major difference between the two. It's the same with upper and lower and doing unilateral splint. The prognosis is really good when I follow up over 10 years. So splinting on one side shows quite good results. We should not think so distinctively. Rather than doing one milk bar, I think it is better to do on both sides in terms of stability. That is my recommendation. Jerry 213K. If I do 2 plus 2 implant crown plus RPD, if I can maintain it very well, will it be better than full denture? Of course. 
If the occlusion with the antagonist can be formed in a stable manner, I think the 2 plus 2 means 2 survey crown will be placed number 3, number 5, number 3, number 5, or number 4 and 6. If you can get stable support from posterior area of both sides, that will be a much better option. I agree. If there are four posts, that's better. After fabricating denture in the attachment area, fracture occurs frequently. What precautions do I need to take in terms of design? We use metal framework on top of housing. Ironically, the area where metal framework is, the resin is thin, so it can fracture easily. The way to prevent this is to bring the patient in frequently and check whether there's any leverage effect or not. If you look at my patient who have been using denture for over 16 years, there are three or four fracture lines around the magnet. If the patient had come every three or six months, as was mentioned, I would have been able to adjust it, but if patients are comfortable, they don't come. So it becomes a bigger problem, but if you can have the patient come in every three or four months, and if you can detect it, you can reline or reposition the housing to prevent the problem. When we make it, or when we send the it to the lab, we can make a request to make that area more thicker because thickness is necessary. You need to ask that to the lab. I love you. There are different components that support over denture, such as locator ball attachment and magnet. What is the criteria for choosing which? Thank you for the wonderful lecture. The components of four over denture. I think this person is talking about different types of attachment which the which should be used i think the person is asking about indication and it's a difficult question there are different advantages for different attachments and systems as i was preparing this presentation i was considering to put this content in but i thought that that would have been too much locator also has many advantages we need to choose the right indication for it. In my case, I use a ball attachment or magnet for over denture. I tend to prefer ball or magnet. That is not to say I don't prefer a locator attachment. It has good retention, but it could lead to bigger loss. Adding to that, if it is combined with alveolar bone loss, then it could lead to wear on metal housing. This would cost the patient a lot of money and refabrication may be necessary. Because of that, a lot of patients make complaints. Personally speaking, I really prefer O-ring and magnet for supporting denture or over denture. I think that's something that patients would prefer. You still use a lot of ball type? Yes, I still use O-ring a lot. Ella, do I need to adjust occlusion on the articulator? I did prepare a slide, but I was not able to show you. It is ideal to use the articulator. I've mentioned this repeatedly, but... Even if there is the slightest occlusal error, the patients can suffer from scars. Sometimes a such level can be so insignificant, so you may be confounded as to why the patient is complaining of pain. If we pay more attention to it, we can detect it, but at times that could be difficult, so that puts patient in a tricky situation. However, if you use an articulator, you can really see it. In my case, I do clinical remounting twice, three times. Because uh, there can be error when I take CR. When you do clinical remounting, you'll be able to see the difference. 
So Ella, I recommend that you use articulator in doing occlusal adjustment and you'd really be able to see the effect. You'd really see the change from the patient's response. Art in prosthodontics in the case of upper edentulous patient, even if there is a lot of alveolar bone resorption, at times you can see retention when the patient uses full denture. Is there a criteria you use to determine whether to use a full denture or over denture when you come up with your treatment plan? In the case of upper, even if there's a lot of alveolar bone resorption, at times, even if you don't use over denture, you can see stability and retention. You need to have the patient chew on food. If force is only applied on one side, in that case, denture can subside. In those moments, a lot of retention loss can occur. So personally, in the case of upper edentulous patient, I look at the temporary denture or existing denture. If I find that, that replacement may be difficult, I use over denture. Fortunately, as for the upper, there's sinus cavity. If there's, if the patient does not have severe buccal atrophy, we can place two implants on both sides. Total of four implants can be placed. I've shown you the same case before. The patient has been using it the prosthesis for over six years, seven years, but is very satisfied. In the upper, there's more class three tendency. It's difficult to resolve it, and it's difficult to gain stability. In that case, it'll be better to place the implants. That's right. I believe another factor to bear in mind is the economic capability of the patient because if you want to do implant treatment, it costs money. If the patient condition is not really good, you need to convince the patient to proceed with the treatment. Chi Chi Chi, how many implants should I place in the upper and lower for doing over denture using implants? I think this has been addressed. Yes, this has been addressed in number three, five, number three, and five. In the lower, you can use the canine area. In the case of lower, if the bone is good in the molar or posterior area, you can place implant in seven or number six, and then place in number four and five. If you do that, the tilting occurs less, occlusion becomes more stable, and long-term stability can be really good. If the bone quality is good in the lower, you can use less number of implant, but for the sake of the lower, if you place implant in the posterior area, then the patient will be able to use it long term. I think we've exhausted most of the question. ID on Jishi. In upper edential patient with severe alveolar bone loss, in order to hide the clasp, if I place two implants on both sides and plan RPD like conus crown, will the prognosis be good? I think it depends on the antagonist. I think you need to pay attention to occlusion because if mass decay tree force is applied on one side, where can occur in between telescopes ligand? If such wear occurs minimally and if the occlusion is balanced, then it's okay. However, if retention loss occurs on one side and a gap is formed, implant fracture can occur. You need to pay a lot of attention to antagonist as well as occlusal relationship for long-term prognosis. If occlusal relationship becomes deviated due to leverage effect and if there's a retention loss on unilateral side then it can lead to very bad result.
Finally, awesome. When you use magnet, the bond with denture resin can fracture and at times patient can lose it. What do you do in that case? In most cases, magnet stays with an oral cavity and if the patient swallows it, it can be a problem. Even if the patient swallows it, it comes out within two weeks. When the patient comes in saying that they have fractured their prosthesis, the magnet in most of the time is still in its place. If the magnet is damaged, if the surface is damaged, then you need to replace it. Even if the patient loses it, you don't need to worry too much. You can just replace it. If you want to be sure, you can take a photo. You can take the image when the patient first comes in. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to find it because it's too small, but I think within three, four days or a week, then it will be flushed out of the patient's body when the patient goes to the bathroom. I think it will be gone within a week. Professor Kim Hee-jung, you've received a lot of questions. Thank you for your answer. I really appreciate it. I would like to extend my gratitude to those who have raised questions today as well. I look forward to more questions onward and help us make our program more interesting. Professor Kim Hee-jung, can you pick one best question out of all the questions? I've received so many questions today. Do I need to choose only one? You can choose two people because you've received so many questions. I want to choose Chun Sung 3820 and Ella. The winners Chun Sung 3820 and Ella, congratulations. At times, people cannot receive the gifts to because they have forgotten to agree to marketing. In that case, coupons cannot be sent out. When you raise your questions, please remember to agree to Dental Sites Marketing to be able to receive your gifts. The real-time chat event continues on in Prosthetics on Friday, so I look forward to your keen participation in the next lecture as well. Thank you for the wonderful lecture as well as the answers. Up until late, a lot of people have stayed with us to learn about implant prosthetics and over denture. So can you provide a word of advice to your peers who are watching our program? I'm sure some of you have more experience with overdenture. Maintenance is really important in overdenture patients. The problems that arise from the overdenture, it's difficult to solve. You need to understand the cause to be able to really rectify the situation. Don't just look at the phenomena, but to think of why this problem occurred. You need to figure out and fix the root cause. This will lead to stress-free situation for both dentist and patient. If you have further question about overdenture, you can email me. If you can provide x-ray image as well as clinical image, I do my best to answer your questions. Is your email available on the university homepage? Yes. If you want to ask long, specific questions, you can use the email. Thank you for your time, Professor Kim. Prosthodontics on Live Friday program viewers, did you enjoy today's lecture? 
we were able to get to various tips on maintenance of overdenture. I hope today's lecture was of great help to you in your clinical practice. If the answers were not answered today, these will be addressed via replies. In the next lecture, Dr. Om sang of Harry Dental Clinic will talk under the title Golden Age of Digital Dentistry, Now is the Time to Use Screw Routine Implant Prosthesis. Thank you for staying up with us until late. Thank you.